Hey everybody, this is Steven from PopCultureMaven.com. We're back with this week's new comic book reviews. Uh, kind of a fairly light week. Um, uh, a fair amount of new ones, a lot of returning ones. Um, you know, we're still trying to catch up from the holidays. There's uh, one I missed last week, so we're going to review it this week. But uh, pretty manageable. Not a lot of big books came out this week, but there's some really good ones Uh uh, that came out. So even though, uh, you know, lately there really just hasn't been a lot of like big marquee, uh, titles. Probably the last one was Batman Spawn, but, uh, but this week, uh, now it just really hasn't been a lot of, a lot of big books, but a lot of good books. So, uh, let's, let's get going. Uh, first up we have the Avengers war across time. Number one written by Paul Levitz with artwork by Alan Davis. So uh, the interesting thing about this is uh, the the writer, Paul Levitz, um, he worked at DC for years. Uh, he retired a number of years ago uh, from DC. And uh, he's, he's done some freelance work uh, for DC with collections, stuff like that. But he's never actually written anything for Marvel. He wrote a number of things. Uh, uh, his biggest thing he probably, uh, wrote was, uh, uh, he did a stint on Legion of Superheroes. Uh, but he, like I said, he's never written, uh, uh, a Marvel book. So this is really his first, first appearance as a Marvel creator. Uh, so it kind of makes sense that he does Avengers. He's really obviously doing Legion. You're, you know, good, good writer for team books. Um, so, so basically what, you know, it's a pretty, it, you know, first of all, it's a throwback story. It's based on events from a Avengers number 11. Now you don't have to have read that. It's just that he's bouncing off that particular story. Uh, it's kind of a story within a story. That's, that's really, uh, kind of a good way to, to take it where it, it kind of takes place in between issue 11 and 12. But once again, you don't need to, you don't need, need to have read those, um, so what it is, is uh, Kang the Conqueror is going after the Avengers. It's a pretty simple premise. And uh, so what it is, it's uh, uh, it's Iron Man, Cap, Thor, uh, Giant Man, and Wasp. That, that's the lineup for the story. And so what it is, is Kang sends Hulk after, you know, uh, he possesses Hulk to go after the team. And that, that's the basic structure. And uh, it ends up New York kind of gets thrashed in the process. Um and, and that's the basic uh, setup for this first issue. Um, and it, it, it we're not quite sure what Kang is is up to, but I'm sure over the next few issues of this mini series that we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, the big win for me is I'm a huge Alan Davis fan. Uh, I always say Alan Davis could draw the phone book and I'd buy it. And I, I really would. But uh, he's a brilliant artist. Uh, he's he's done a ton of stuff over the years. Uh, he's done X-Men. He's done Batman. He's done uh, he's done Justice League. Uh, he's done, he did Excalibur. Uh, he's just a really brilliant artist. And, um, and once again, he's really perfect for this book because this whole thing is really a throwback to like, you know, that, that more, uh, you know, gold, golden age of, of, of comics, golden and silver age of comics. And it's just, you know, it's a really simple story, but, but I, that's what I like about it. There's, there's not a lot of, there's no continuity you need to know. And it's just, it's just a fun, simple story. And, and I really like those. Um, and, and once again, this, this creative team is, is just perfect for this book. I really recommend, I highly recommend this was just a really fun book and I really can't wait to see where they kind of take the whole thing with, with this story. Uh, next up we have Batman, the adventures continues season three, number one written by Alan Burnett and Paul Dini, uh, with artwork by Jordan Gibson. So what this is, is that what they've done is there's, there's, uh, this is the third season. Uh, so this is a, a mini series and it, it basically is just more adventures in the Batman uh, animated series universe. Uh, so, and the nice thing about most of these stories is that they're, they're, they're standalone stories. Like, like this issue, uh, has to do with, uh, Hitman muscle. He's in jail and they're trying to get him to make a deal to, um, uh, to flip on, uh, Esther, um, v Valestra. And so he eventually gets, well, they, what happens is while he's in prison, killer croc tries to come and kill him. So he knows that he's on the hit list. And, but there's a Reverend Meadows who convinces him 
to, you know, hey, you should take the deal, you know, and, and, and try to help, you know, put the, put these bad guys in jail. Uh, and, and that's kind of where things, I don't want to give any thing of more. I mean, it's a pretty basic, simple story, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, it just really, you know, once again, it's really great to kind of relive the Batman, the animated series, uh, even if it is in comic form. Uh, I mean, you have, uh, Burnett and Denny who were the, the, the right part of the writing of, of that brilliant series. Um, now I'm not really familiar with uh, Jordan Gibson's artwork, but he does a really good job of capturing that animated style because you have to, it has to have that kind of clean, simple look that the, uh, the animated series has. And, and he does a really good job here. And it's just, it's, it's really just a lot of fun. Once again, it's, it's, it's just Batman, the animated series in, in comic form. And I'm okay with that. Cause I love that series and I love these comics and, as long as they keep making them, I'm going to keep buying them. Uh, next up, we have Spawn Unwanted Violence, number one, written by Tom McFarlane with artwork by Mike Del Mundo. Uh, so what this is, is <sighs> part of the part of the problem with the book is the story is incredibly convoluted. It starts off uh, where, you know, it's kind of like this this third world nation and uh, this this, I guess, dictator or uh, whatever some higher person kidnaps kids from the street to to basically be slaves so spawn kind of comes but while he's he's coming there's this character called the freak and the it's kind of a cross between uh uh you know a monster and and death i mean get, so basically the freak does is willing to do anything to get information out of somebody and that's that's kind of that part of the story but then it just, it, it kind of flips and cause I guess he's looking for something called uh, the, the freak is called looking for something for file F. And then the second half of the book just gets really convoluted. Like it's like moving along, but it's like, you're not sh quite sure what the hell's going on beyond the basic premise of this, this, the freak looking for this file F it, it's really sadly convoluted. Uh, the only, the only reason I even kind of, uh, even read it was uh, the artwork by Mike Del Mundo is really gorgeous. It's a really great looking book. Unfortunately, this the story is just such a mess that it really it kind of doesn't make any sense. And it, it's and and it, what made it even more disappointing is that uh, Del Mundo's art is so good that it's just it's kind of wasted on this like really convoluted story. Uh, it is really, I sadly can't recommend this. Uh, but it, it, if you're at the comic shop and they have it, definitely flip through and at, le at the very least look at, uh, Del Mundo's artwork, which is really gorgeous. It's just a shame that, you know, he, he's stuck on this. Uh, next up we have Black Cloak, number one, written by Kelly Thompson with artwork by Meredith McLaren. Uh, so apparently this was a Substack comic that is, is coming to print and the, the basic premise is, uh, so there's the black cloaks, which are detectives. And so there's, uh, Phil Philandra and, uh, Pax, uh, Floranda used to, she used to be, so what it is, is there's kind of, there's the, the, the higher, the high society, the rich people live up higher. And then, it, you know, this is post-apocalyptic. And so there's kind of, you know, there's, I don't want to say monsters, but there's like mermaids. There's, there's mute, you know, different species that have mutated. And so there's like humans and, and, you know, kind of other creatures. So what, what it is, is so they, they come across a Royal that has, uh, you know, been murdered. So there's that. And then they come across, uh, they come across th two other bodies. So there's three victims and so what it is, is the detectives have to, the black cloaks have to, they're trying to figure it out. So they go to the Royal palace where, um, uh, Philandra <clears throat> basically grew, she grew up there, but was, was banished for, we're not quite sure why she was banished, but it was bad. And they, they allow her to come back, but they're not really happy. She's back. And so there's kind of that subplot of the story going on but what it is is it's it's kind of like thompson has uh blended kind of a fantasy you know blade runner sort of thing with the detective story so it uh it, it's kind of interesting i i did really actually like the story um uh it, the i liked mclaren's artwork but there there was time the 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 thing that that got me it was a little on the simple side but um, and I don't think it really hurt the story. It's just, I, I like her artwork. It just felt a little simple at times, but 
it did do the job of, you know, moving the story along and everything. And, um, you know, like I said, it was just, I think it was an adjustment thing that I needed to get to with her artwork. Uh, but, but overall, I really, I did enjoy the book. And, um, like I said, I really like the story, uh, the art, like I said, I think I just had to get used to the style of, of, uh, McLaren's artwork. But once I kind of got over that hurdle, uh, I, I really, really enjoyed the book. And I think it's, it's just a good murder mystery. I, I mean, I'm kind of a sucker for detective stories. So if, if, you do a good one, then then I'm pretty much there. So it's definitely worth checking out this week. Uh, next up, we have Joe Fix It, number one, written by Peter David with artwork by Yearly Sin, uh, Sinar. So this came out last week. Uh, it just kind of got uh, lost in the pile. So what this is, is this uh, during Peter David's Hulk run, uh, he created, you know, the Gray Hulk became Mr. Fix It. He was like, he was a bodyguard hitman in Vegas. And so... This is really, I mean, you really, that's all you need to know. And they, and, and it's just that he's, he works for a mobster boss in Vegas and Kingpin comes to town. And of course, you know, Kingpin probably wants to, you know, he wants to basically kill the, the mobster. And of course he's not, that's not going to happen because Joe Fix is his bodyguard. So Kingpin's screwed. But what's interesting is, uh, that, that, uh, David brings in Spider-Man to the, uh, cause, uh, Spidey's, um, getting ready to fly home and then he sings Kingpin in the airport and he's like, oh, I better, I better stay because this is, this is not going to turn out well. And so that's the basic premise here. And of course, you know, Kingpin, uh, doesn't, uh, get his way. So we'll kind of see where, you know, cause he's going to hang around Vegas. He's going to cause trouble. That that's really a big, basic premise here. And, uh, you know, once again, I, the Joe fix, it was a really great thing that Peter David created in Hulk. And I'm really happy to see him back in this miniseries. You know, it's once again, there's, you know, there's no real continuity. You have to know beyond that. This is just a version of the Hulk. And, uh, uh, Sinar's artwork is really nice. Uh, he, uh, uh, did, uh, Marvel's, uh, that, that book recently with Kurt Biscuit and his artwork's really nice and he fits in really well with, with the story. So this is a lot of fun. And, and if you're a fan of Peter David's Hulk, like I am, this is definitely well worth picking up. Uh, next up we have DC universe, Lazarus planet alpha number one. Uh, with the main story written by Mark Wade and uh, with artwork by Ricardo uh, Federici. And then there's a Monkey Prince backup uh, by, uh, written by Gene uh, Lewin Yang uh, with artwork by Billy Tan. Uh, so, so what this is, this comes out of the Batman versus Robin miniseries. So if you didn't read that, I wouldn't say you'll, you'll be lost because they kind of explain. So what it is, is the Lazarus Pit has... I guess it's become a volcano and now it's spewing out uh, toxic or poisonous uh, uh, Lazarus rain. So it's kind of mutating people around the planet. And so what it is, is Damien is basically sends out a distress call to call on any heroes that can come. So there's poison Ivy, there's swamp thing. There's uh, there's monkey prince, there's blue devil, there's a Tana, uh, uh, there's a bunch of others, but, uh, so basically it's, it's kind of this, it's DC's this year, the first event of the year. And I wouldn't say that I, you know, once again, I know Mark, Mark Wade had, had writ, wrote, um, Batman versus Robin. And I liked the first issue and the second issue got weird. So I never ended up, uh, ended up reading it, but I actually kind of like this story, even though it, 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 it's just like, it's an event thing. I mean, cause it's going to continue in, in like specials and, and other stories. Um, I, you know, it was an okay story. I actually kind of liked it. It was just a basic story where they're basically the heroes are storming the castle, looking for the bad guy. That's, that's the basic premise here. And that's the, that's the story. Uh, the artwork, uh, by, uh, uh, Frederiki is really nice. It's a really good looking book. And then the, uh, the monkey prince backup by Yang and Tan is nice. Cause it, it kind of, if you haven't, uh, read monkey prince, it kind of fills in who the character is. And it looks like he's going to be an important part of this whole Lazarus thing. Uh, you know, once again, I'm kind of offended out. Um, I enjoyed it. I wasn't overwhelmed. Uh, it was, it was a nice read for what it was, but, uh, just, just like I said, before Warren, this is going to continue through specials and, and, and individual issues. So if you want to, uh, you know, in the back of the, this issue, it kind of has a checklist of all the books if you're going to, uh, follow it. So, uh, just be forewarned about that. Uh, next up we have Predator number six written by Ed Brisson 
with artwork by Kev Walker. So uh, what this is, is that the, the girl, her parents were killed. And so she's been hunting the predator that has, she's been hunting down predators to find the one that has killed her parents. And, and luckily for her, the one that has come to the ship where she has been uh, captured uh, by the corporation is, is, is here. And uh, he pretty much starts killing everybody on the base. And, and yeah, that's, this issue is just like a giant battle of, you know, like the, the humans versus the predator. Um, I've actually enjoyed uh, this story. Um, I, I would say that it probably could have been done maybe in four issues. Um, and, 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 uh, but, but I did like the story. It was pretty basic. It had, it had some, some good ideas. I wouldn't say that it, you know, blew my mind or anything, but it was a good predator story. Uh, Walker's artwork's really nice. And, uh, but apparently what Marvel's going to do is, uh, they're going to do these as mini series, which I th kind of think is a better idea that way, not so much for a new number one, but to, to let people know that like when there is a new number one, it's a new storyline. Um, once again, if you're a Predator fan, you're going to enjoy these. I don't know this is going to convince people that they're going to love Predator, but, you know, it was, it was fun while it lasted. Uh, if you missed it, though, I'm sure there'll be a trade uh, co co uh, collecting uh, the entire six issues miniseries. Uh, next up, we have Danger Street, number two, uh, written by Tom King with artwork by George Fornes. Uh, so this has literally become my favorite book. Um, uh, so uh, this, the I'll quickly go through the backstory. Back in the seventies, there was a there was a, a series called First Issue Specials, and it was just uh, it was to, uh, it was to try out new new characters and new stories, uh, and to bring uh, there was like Creeper and some other Warlord and some other characters uh, just to see if sales on them were good enough or if anybody cared. But what King has done here, he's taken all those characters that were in, because there were 13 issues of that book. He has access to all those characters. Uh, in, you know, like I said, Creeper, Warlord. Uh, he has access to the new gods. There's the green team. There's uh, the original Manhunter. Uh, it, just a bunch. So basically what he's done is he's thrown all these characters into like a blender and creating this sort of mystery uh, story. So... Uh, Warlord and Starman are on the run from the law. Uh, you've got um, the green team has lost one of their members. So, you know, we're we're trying to figure out what, what's going on. Then there's the Outsiders, not Batman the Outsiders. This is a different Outsiders. Uh, they're, you know, are, you know, they're perceived as like a terrorist group. So we don't quite know what's going on because there's kind of um, something, you know, like, like somebody is somebody running that team. We're not sure. Uh, and then the really big, the big flip this issue for me was uh, High Father goes to Darkseid to tell him that Atlas has been, is missing. And Darkseid's like, oh crap. Uh, so that was like, holy mackerel, what's that? What's going on with there? Uh, once again, King, uh, you know, it's still really, he's building here. And also, uh, uh, then you have Lady Cop. Once again, the wildest, like, who calls her Lady Cop? Anyways, she's looking for the dingbats of Danger Street. That's where the title comes from. Uh, and so she's she's being, you know, she's doing her detective work trying to find them because uh, they have an unusual car. So she's going to all these gas stations. So once again, he's still building the world here. So, uh, you know, once again, you really need to, you you got to read the first issue, but... Um, as always, I really love how King, it, once again, he has 13, roughly 13 plus characters that he's he's got in this story. And so there's a lot to get going on it. So he's, he you know, he's entered, he introduced everybody in the first issue and he's just building on that. So I would say there's still going to be a couple more issues of the building and the mystery and it'll, it, it is unfolding. It's just, it's very methodical at this point, but I love this book. Um, I'm a big fan of Tom King. I love how he takes, you know, basically third string characters and just goes crazy with them. And, and Fornes' artwork is amazing. He uh, worked uh, he worked with King on the Rorschach uh, series, which was amazing. Uh, I really love this book. I really, really recommend it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really wild. And once again, you don't have to know any of those uh, stories from the from the 70s run it's just he's using the characters uh so next up we have bone orchard mythos Ten Thousand black feathers number five written by jeff lemire with artwork by andrea sorrento sorrentino 
So this is the final issue of, of the 10,000 Black Feathers. And then it, this is the second of the third, you know, this is the middle part of the mythology. And so what it is, is uh, the, the girls, finally, she goes, uh, oh, shoot. Uh, she goes to the other side to find her friend that is supposedly dead. And so she gets the other side. It's kind of like, so when they were kids, they, they created this magical world. Well, apparently, whether they created it or it was always there, uh, the, she so they have, she has to go to the world to, to save her friend. And it, it's, it's, I don't want to really say anymore because it'll ruin it, but, but I will say it's, it's very, it's a very bittersweet ending, uh, which is quite interesting. Uh, and, and actually quite good. And, and uh, Lemire has done this before, especially Gideon Falls had a very bittersweet ending also. Uh, but but I really liked it. And, and it was one of those things that it it's, it's these stories connect, but l not loosely there. It's just part of a bigger picture of this mythology. So I, I would really suggest reading The Passageway was the first one. Then there's 10,000 Black Feathers. And I'm not sure the exact title of the next one, but there's going to be a, another graphic novel to, to bookend uh, the 10,000 Black Feathers. Uh, but once again, you can read this on its own. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. If you missed it, I'm sure they're going to do a collection of these five issues. Uh, and uh, I, like I said, I'm a really big fan of Lemire and uh, uh, Sorrentino, and I really just loved it. It was, it was very, it was a very, um, it was a story that really washed over you, and that's what I really liked. And then Sorrentino's artwork is just absolutely amazing how he does two different styles of, like, you know, the fantasy world and then the real world. Uh, it was just, it was really amazing. It kind of blew me away. I, I really, really love this book. Uh, next up, we have Batman and the Joker Deadly Duo, number three, written and drawn by Mark Silvestri. So, uh, so you know, Joe, Bat, Batman has gotten beat up by these weird mute, modified mutants uh, mutations and what they find out this this is that whenever they they kind of absorb uh so like if like Batman got bit and the tooth was there it absorbed part of Batman and created like a new mutation that's like part this mutation and part Batman and so there's that going on and then there's there's so basically he has the real Joker, but there's this mutant Joker that's kind of running, running around. He's killing, killing, uh, uh, mobsters that, that were with, worked with the Joker. Uh, and then, uh, and he's also, you know, basically trying to get him and Batman to work together because he's got some plan going on. So really this third issue just kind of is building upon the story. I think it's either six or seven issues that this is total. So this is really, you know, the third issue continues to build on the story. Uh, you know, once again, Mark Silvestri, his artwork's absolutely amazing. It's, it's, this is really a lot of fun. And I like how, uh, you know, Batman, you know, he has to work with the Joker. He doesn't want to, but it's, he's, he's being forced to by this mutant Joker. So it's it's really quite interesting, and I, I really like the premise that Silvestri set up. His artwork's amazing. It, it's it's really been a nice surprise. That, so I've I've really been enjoying it so far. So we'll kind of see how he keeps building it uh, from from this third issue. And finally, this week we have Human Target number ten, written by Tom King with artwork by Greg Smallwood. Uh, you know, once again, this has been my favorite book of of twenty twenty two, and and we're almost at the end. We got a couple more issues to go. Uh, so I, I, will try to tell you a little bit of the plot without spoiling, but so he, he, he brings in Gnort, which I'm really surprised. I completely forgot that he was in justice league international. So he bring, he brings him in because he wants to go to Oa to find it. Cause so there's, there's the room of records that has records on everybody, green lanterns, people, everybody. And so he wants to go there to look at Guy Gardner's file because Guy Gardner is apparently dead. And so he wants to look through his files for certain reasons, which I will not give away because that's the the end of this particular issue. But what's interesting is uh, not only having Gnort in there, which is a lot of fun because he's like a Green Lantern. And he's kind of, he's not that good at it. Uh and of course, uh, uh, Christopher Chance gets him drunk, so that's that. There, there's there's the fun that comes with that. Uh, but really, the interesting thing is when Christopher's there, he actually looks through his own file, 
uh, which is really interesting. And it, it, you know, once again, I'm trying not to spoil too much, but this issue was really, really interesting. I mean, this series has been absolutely amazing. Uh, beyond the story, um, which is absolutely stunning, uh, Greg Smallwood's artwork is just, this is one of the best looking books I have seen in a long time. The use of color and, and layout and design, it's just, it is spectacular. It is it is top notch stuff, and and uh, it's 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 a good you know once again it's kind of a good murder mystery. That's the basic premise of the story, and it's just it's a wonderful book. I really cannot recommend this book enough. It's it's been one of the best books I read last year, and I really can't wait to see where uh, King and Smallwood take it after this. So uh, definitely definitely check that book out. It's it's really it's it's a it's a big win in my book. Uh, that's going to do it this week. As always, public service announcement. I get all my comics at Pulp Fiction Comics, Long Beach, California. Uh, Ryan Skinner runs a great store. Uh, there's Annie. There's uh, Wendy. There's Eduardo. There's uh, Derek, who does all their social media. Uh, it's a really good store. They offer a great pull service. Once again, this is why I don't miss any of these issues. Um, they, they take care. He has great customer service, offers 30% uh, off of trades and graphic novels every day. Uh, he'll special order stuff if it's available. Uh, they have a nice selection of manga at 20% off. It's a really, really good, good comic shop. Um, and, uh, and, and like I said, if you're in the Long Beach area, definitely check it out. It's, it's, uh, it's a really good store. Uh, if you live in the LA area, there's Pulp Fiction Culver City. Uh, same name. Uh, there was one owner and then he, he sold them off to the employees. Uh, Chris and her team run that, but they have the, a lot of the same discounts. Uh, they, they, um, they offer pool service too. Uh, it's, it's, uh, they're, they're both really good stores, but obviously, you know, uh, my, my home, my home port is, is the Long Beach store, uh, with, with Ryan and, and the gang. Uh, but definitely always support your local comic shop. Uh, please make sure that wh whatever you order from them, uh, you pick up on a timely basis because they have to pay for it before you do. Uh, but uh, you support your local comic shop. It's always important. Uh, and and just, you know, like I said, make sure you pick up your books and, and anything you special order. Um, and uh, as always, we end our show with Be Kind. Being kind is, is simple. It, uh, it makes you feel good. It'll make somebody else feel good. It'll make somebody's day. Uh, and, and the feeling of making somebody's day, you know what that, uh, hopefully you've felt that before, but just be kind, uh, be kind to each other out there. Be kind to yourself, uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Uh, make sure, uh, you know, uh, you just, just take care of yourselves out there. Uh, thanks for watching as always, please like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comments are always welcome and that's going to do it this week. So we'll be back next week. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging. Uh, take care of yourselves. This is Steven from popculturemaven.com signing off. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.